In this video, I'm going to continue in tutorial style um, explaining how to use XPP for various um, calculations, numerical calculations regarding a uh, system of equations. Um, and I'll just show what those equations are. This is um, uh, a follow up video. The first one, I plotted steady states, null clines, some solution curves, and calculated eigenvalues for the steady states to determine their classification. And uh, here are the system of equations. I'm dealing with a predator prey where I've modified the original system um, described by uh, Lotka and Volterra. Um, and it's now got a prey population that undergoes logistic growth in the absence of predator. And so this is what the phase plane looked like when the carrying capacity, now these equations are non-dimensional. And so this is a non-dimensional carrying capacity, K. Um, and so uh, its value relative to one is going to influence the, um, the nature of the phase plane and steady state. So let's modify that parameter. I'm going to click on the param button here and bring that window into view. So what we see here is both the parameters A and K. Uh, A is just a time constant that's not going to uh, oh yeah, that was not multiplying everything. So that would have changed the phase plane. I'm going to leave that one alone and I'm just going to change k to 1.5. So I'm bringing k from below 1 to above 1. And what we expect to see then is this red null cline, which is an x null cline, and that comes from the 1 minus x over k term, essentially. And I'm going to, first I click OK. Now you could hit close. I'm always a bit unsure about whether the OK is required or not. So at a paranoia, because I've never really been able to test it, or I never have tested it, I just hit OK, and then I close the window. And now hopefully we have that parameter value stored, and we can clear the null clines and solution curves from the previous case. And now I'm going to do an N for null cline, and then another N for new set of null clines. And you can see there that diagonal line is now lower slope angle and hitting out here, which means we have a new steady state at um, non-zero values of both predator and prey. That's what we call a coexistence state. So if that's a stable state, then that means that the predator and prey can coexist stably, um, which is sort of a more interesting biological case. Okay, so let's do an I for initial conditions and M for mouse and see what some of these solution curves look like. So if I click way out here, where do we go? All right, we look like we're undergoing some spiraling behavior. So let's let's hypothesize right here that this steady state has a complex eigenvalues, but the real part is negative. That's what it looks like. All right, so uh, let's check that right away, actually. So I'm going to go to the singular points. That finds my steady states. I'll use the mouse to do it. I'll click near that steady state. And up pops the eigenvalue window. Yes, I want eigenvalues. Now these will appear in the original XBP window back here. And so let me raise it to the front. I'll move this over a bit so they're visible. So you can see here that I have negative real part on both eigenvalues. They're complex conjugate pairs. And I have a real, uh, sorry, I have a non-zero imaginary part. So that was a correct hypothesis. We have a spiral, a stable spiral at the coexistence state. All right, but um, maybe the other steady states are behaving the same as they did at the lower parameter value. Let's check that out. So let's do another couple initial conditions, I, M, and I'll click right over here by the axis to see what happens near the origin. That's still looking like a saddle behavior. We're coming down towards the origin, but because it's not right on the approach line, it swoops off and also does not make it to this steady state. It swoops into it and zips away and spirals in up here. So that tells me that I uh, seem to have two saddles. So let's check that out. I'll do a singular points with an S and mouse to click, and then click near the origin. And I'm gonna, without bringing that window in, I'm just gonna click on yes, and we'll see the eigenvalues pop up. Yep, one of them is one, one of them is minus one. So that's the same structure we had for the previous, um, for the previous uh, parameter set. And I am going to click no for the invariant sets. I actually know what those are going to be. Those will be right on the red and green curves because those are the 
lines of approach and departure from the steady state. A saddle will only have one way, either from above or below or from left or right, of approaching and one way of going backwards in time and approaching, in other words, leaving the steady state. All others work, will curve close to it, but not right to it. Um, and, and just as a reminder, we do also get this equilibria window that tells us that we have a steady state. Here are the coordinates of the steady state, and this is the number of real positive eigenvalues and real negative eigenvalues. Uh, oh, actually, maybe I'll go back and do that spiral so you can see the C plus and C minus values, which will suddenly be non-zero for that one. All right, but let's do the other saddle first, or what we think is a saddle. So I'm going to do singular points, mouse, and click on my guess. So I go close in here, and I'm going to print the eigenvalues. So there's that window that says print eigenvalues, yes, no. I'm going to print them. There we go. Yeah, minus 1 and 5, 0. 0.5. So we do have another saddle out there. I'm not going to print uh, plot the invariant sets. I'll give that a no. Even though here it's a little bit more subtle where they are, although you can sort of see one looks like it's coming in along the green null cline and out just above the red null cline. And, uh, and so you'll notice that the saddles both got marked with triangles and I'm not too sure what the sable spiral is. You can look up in the we can zoom in, but that takes a bit of effort. Um, so I'm just going to skip it and let you check if you want to see what symbol you get for a stable spiral. Uh, so let me go back to that spiral, though, and catch it again, because I want to just show no eigenvalues, no thank you, and the equilibria are now hiding back here. There, and you can see now that we have two complex eigenvalues with negative real part. All right, so that's the steady states. Next, what I want to do is I want to um, produce a bifurcation diagram for this system. I'd like to start with, um, let's see. Uh, well, let's see what happens if I start with the k value where it is right now, and I run, oh no, let's let's make the k value smaller than 1. So I'm going to go back to the parameters and make k 0.5. I'm going to leave that open, so if I change it again, I don't have to go chasing that window down. And I will, so what we need to do is clean this up and put in some null lines. And what I want to do, I'm going to do an initial condition, and the reason for that is the way we catch solutions for um, for transferring over to auto for bifurcation diagrams. So if you want to start your bifurcation diagram, you need to value uh, coordinates of a steady state to start at. And if you know the coordinates of the steady state you want to use as your starting point, you can put those into the initial conditions data. So these x, y coordinates that you see here are just the initial conditions of the last point I clicked on in the previous phase plane. So if I knew which one I wanted to focus on, let's say the origin, I could type in 0, 0 right here. Um, but let's say I want to start at the steady state uh, here at the intersection of the diagonal null cline and the green line. And suppose I didn't know that it was at 1 half comma 0. So, um, so instead of directly editing the initial data, there's another way to do it. And I'll close the initial data for now and do it the other way. And that is, I'm going to, um, well, OK. So let's see. There's two different cases. If I want to try and pick up an unstable steady state, then I can't do it by initial conditions. I would have to do it using singular points and then manually transfer the answer over. Maybe there's another way to do it more sort of automatic that doesn't leave you subject to typos, but, um, but I'm going to do it um, a different way for the stable steady state. So I'm going to go with an initial condition and integrate from some point in the plane, let's say right here, and that's going to converge into the steady state I'm interested in using as my starting point for the bifurcation diagram. So now uh, what I need to do is I need to make sure that instead of having this coordinate in the ICs, which is what will currently be there, these will now be the coordinates of the point where I clicked, which is 0 0.7, 0 0.02, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0
0 0.7, 0.02, I want to get these coordinates. So I'm going to click on data. Whoops, only a single click. That's just the focus. So this is what the data viewer, and this gives you the time value of the solution, the x value of the solution, and the y value of the solution. You can see my initial click was on the coordinates 0 0.79, 0 0.279. And what I want to do is I want to go down this list all the way to the end. Well, I could just hold my finger down and go for 200, 200 frames because that's how long I integrated the solution. But instead, I'm just going to click End. And you can see now here I am getting very close to the 0 0.50 coordinates by the time I get to 20 time units. And so I'm going to make sure that the very first line on this page is the one closest to the steady state I'm interested in, because it's the first line of this of what's displayed here that'll get captured when I hit get. So let me actually um, show the initial data when I do this. I'll put it over here. So you can see, watch what happens to the numbers when I hit this get button. You'll see the numbers there change to essentially 0.5 and essentially 0, 10 to the minus 5. And so I have now captured the steady state or as close to the steady state as XPP gets. If this turns out not to be close enough when I try and run auto, and I'll know that because it'll max out right away and not be able to trace out a bifurcation diagram for me, um, I can come back here and integrate for, farther, uh, for longer and get closer to the steady state and see if that's a good enough. The other option is to solve it by hand and find out that 0 0.50 is actually the coordinate that I'm interested in. Okay, so I'm just going to close that because that worked and that should be good enough for our purposes. And so I'm also going to close the initial data. Of course, now that I've closed it, I'm going to want it in a couple seconds, of course. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is now that I have the steady state and parameter value that I need in the buffer, I will hit File, Auto, and then the Auto window comes up. And I can, now I always go through these three quickly before I hit run. You can always just hit run and see what happens. But I'm going to hit parameter first and see, just make sure that it interpreted what I wanted correctly. Already I see that it didn't. In my file here, I listed A first and then K. It, XPP automatically assumes that that's the order of interest, but I'm actually interested in a using k as my bifurcation parameter first, and I'm not actually interested in using a, so I'll make that second, but it doesn't really matter too much because I'm not going to use it here. Okay, so I'm going to click OK on those, and now it's following the correct parameter. Now I want to plot. I'm going to go, so the high-low is usually what you want for these plots of steady states, uh, or for, for, uh, for periodic solutions as well. And so now I'm going to check the axes, so I want to, my main parameter is k, and it's going to be plotted against the x-coordinate of the steady state. So as I vary k, that diagonal line is going to move back and forth. The y component will always be 0, but the x will change. So if I were to put a y here, it would be a very boring bifurcation diagram. It would just always be y equals 0 until I hit a bifurcation, and then maybe something would branch out. Um, but now at least I'll have some vertical change in this picture, so that's nice. <laughs> And I will go, x min is actually going to be the x horizontal um, uh, direction of, in the plot, which is actually the main parameter k. So I want k to go from 0.5 up to, let's say, 3 or so. So let me, I'm going to make the window start from 0 and go to 3. And that'll be a little bit beyond where I'll stop the, the k range at 2.5, let's say, after. And then the y values, well, the y value corresponds to the x value, and that's going to go from, well, I'll just make that go from 0 up till 3 as well, because it shouldn't go beyond that. We'll see. OK. And then axes is what I just did. And then numerics. So these, there's a lot of parameters here. There's a few that I, 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 I want you to focus on. Um, so this one is not too critical. This one is, uh, you can change that if your things don't go far enough. A bunch of these. So this is what the default stepping is in your parameter value, or really arc length along the bifurcation diagram. So that's probably OK as is. We'll see if that's not good. And that gets modified on the fly sometimes. 
And then the one that usually causes trouble is this DS, DX ma, DS Max. If this is too big, you might get a very um, chunky looking curve. In other words, piecewise linear pieces of your uh, bifurcation diagram. And then the one that always messes me up is I forget to modify the parameter range. So we want to allow the parameter to go as low as zero and as high as, let's say, uh, what did we say, 2.5. We have made that window up to three. And so I'm going to set that. And now I'm going to run and we'll see what we get. Choosing to follow the steady state that we put in there and see what happens as the parameter changes. Hey, and look, that's what we've got. We have uh, 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 a value of uh, oh, x equals zero. Which one are we tracking? I see, this is the one that we we're interested in. So we tracked along this one. It was stable at the parameter value of 0.5 that we looked at. And then we increased it. That parameter crossed with, or that steady state crossed with another one in a transcritical bifurcation. And we can see all the steady states getting mapped out here. So that's actually a really nice first bifurcation diagram. So I will stop it there and continue on with more XPP tricks in a subsequent video.